I'm with Martin Goldsmith and uh, we're talking about what it means to be a Jew in the Pew. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the Jew in the Pew is a weekly podcast about Jews in the church, Jewish disciples of Jesus and the issues that affect them. It's a collection of interviews, conversations, reports about Jewish disciples of Yeshua, looking at their personal stories, their wisdom for life and their history. It looks at church and Jewish history, contemporary issues, all from the perspective of a Jewish disciple of Jesus, and it offers prayer, resources, information and encouragement. This is our first issue, but uh, the podcast will include in coming days book reviews, recipes, music, examples of Jewish and Christian thought, a bit of humour, and we want to keep a light and warm touch, but deal with critical and important issues. The tone is one that we hope you'll find inclusive and inviting, and giving opportunities for information and further involvement. So without more ado, I'm going to introduce you to our very first Jew in the pew, Martin Goldsmith. Hello, wow. Martin. <laughs> Tell me, how did you become a Jew in the pew? Well, actually, my parents wanted to be properly English, and so, although they were atheists, they got baptised, not for any religious reason, but in order to be properly English. So I was brought up without any religion, but if anything, I belonged to the church, not to the shul, the synagogue. So you were brought up with no religion at all, but you went to Church of England? That's right. I didn't go to any church or anything. And then how did you become a real Jew in the pew? Well, I got hold of a Bible, but didn't realise that it was a religious book, and read it. It had all the history of the Jewish people, and I was fascinated by it. And then I began to realise that the hero, God, actually worked all sorts of miracles. And I was being badly bullied at school in anti-Semitic stuff, and... Uh, I asked God, and I think it was my first ever prayer, I asked God to give me a miracle, 24 hours, in which nobody would say or do anything to me. And uh, I meant no bullying or teasing, but actually God took me literally, and uh, no teacher asked me a question or gave me homework or anything like that. And nobody said a word to me or did anything to me for 24 hours. That, that's amazing. So even though you didn't really believe in God, you, you prayed and yeah. God gave you this. Now, you talked about I was a bit desperate. And you talked about bullying at school. Tell us, when was this and what was it like living it at that time? It was in England and it was just after the Second World War. Uh, amazingly, at the time when all the news was on the liberation of the the camps in Germany and Poland, and uh, but in my school there was still a lot of anti-Semitism here in England. Right. How old were you then? I was. Uh, the bullying was between the ages of thirteen and fifteen. Really, and then just that very dramatic experience of. No bullying, for, no si silence even. For Absolute hours. silence, if I didn't exist in a boarding school. So um, that means that really you experience the power of God without even believing in God. That's right. That's amazing. We're going to pause there and we're going to come back after a few moments. OK, we're back with Martin Goldsmith and uh, we've just heard how initially this was an amazing, miraculous event he experienced of a 24-hour period of silence that... Uh, freed him from any bullying and in fact convinced him that God was there and answered prayer. So what happened next, Martin? How did you really confirm or strengthen your belief in God and, and how did it focus on Jesus? Well, I set out to be very religious and nominally Christian, but uh, going to school chapel at least once every day and so on. Uh, but it wasn't a great success. And then uh, I did my military service in the Navy. And then I went to university in Oxford. Uh, and one of the students explained to me that it wasn't really what I did for God that counted, but what God had done for me in the work of Jesus, uh, the Messiah. And that just changed my life. 
That's amazing. So you were at university. What were you studying there? I was studying modern languages. I was already a Russian interpreter by profession in my military service. Uh, and then uh, I'm a German Jew in background. Okay. Uh, and so I have quite reasonable German as well. You speak a number of languages, I think. Yeah, I do, yes. What other languages do you speak? Uh, well, I have Indonesian because I worked in Indonesia for a while, uh, and Malay, uh, and Malay in four different dialects. Wow. Uh, and then in Indonesia, I worked with a, a, a smaller ethnic group uh, called the Batak Kalo. Okay. And I speak their language. Well, you're a man of many parts. You're much travelled and multilingual. Let's come back to the story. You're at university at Oxford. And what was the process then that really gave you a, a conviction about being a Jew in the pew? Well, uh, I didn't think very much about the Jewish background at first because I, all my Christian experience was quite goy and all my fellow Christians were goy. <laughs> so everything was, in my new faith, everything was totally Gentile. Uh, and um, it was only later that I came to realise that, that I needed to adapt my Christian faith to a Jewish culture. Uh, and that, but that came later, partly through the Indonesian church. Okay, so I expect you're experiencing what many of our listeners will be hearing, which is somehow they've come to believe in Jesus, they've come to be a Jew in the pew, but they haven't quite integrated what it means to be, say, fully Jewish and fully Christian. We're going to come back to that in a few moments, but we'll pause now for our next break. The website, we'll advertise the website, so yep. uh, that will all be there as well. Good. Okay. So we're back with Martin Goldsmith and uh, we're talking about his own experience integrating his faith in Jesus and what it means to be Jewish. Uh, for many of our listeners, I expect being a Jew in the pew is not always an easy road to go down. Uh, how do you integrate what it means with your background and your character and your, your uh, ancestry, your Jewish cred credentials, if you like, and your faith in Jesus? How did that work out for you, Martin? Yes, well, when I first became a, a really committed Christian, uh, I always felt that I, I loved Jesus and I loved the Bible and I loved other believers in Jesus, but I always felt my Christian faith uh, was a little bit like buying a jacket in, in the market. Uh, beautifully cut, wonderful material, lovely jacket, but it didn't quite fit on my shoulders. And so I never felt quite comfortable in my Christian faith. Uh, and then when I went as a missionary to Indonesia uh, and worked there, I met the Indonesian church, which was very Indonesian, not European or American. Uh, and I suddenly found that I was really at home there. Uh, and that set me looking at the Bible through my Jewish eyes, thinking about Jesus through my Jewish eyes, uh, and uh, just thinking about the whole faith that I had from a Jewish perspective. So it was really your experience of going overseas, going to Indonesia, yes. entering a completely different culture. Can you give me a couple of examples of how that impacted the way you saw scripture or your faith from more a Jewish perspective? Yes, I think the West is very much based on I and me and individual. Uh, and uh, the Indonesian church was much more group conscious. Uh, and I think that fits a Jewish culture. Um, as Jews, we are not quite accurate by a Western perspective on the use of our verbs and time where we think of things being our experience now, and actually it happened a thousand years ago or 
will happen in a thousand years time. Right. Uh, so we use our tenses a bit differently from Europeans and we think of time differently. So you're referring to the Hebrew Bible where there's a, yes. a completed action or an incomplete action and we used to teach that yes. as past or perfect or imperfect. That's right. And in, in Hebrew, the verbs hardly show whether it's past, present or future. Right. That's fantastic. We're going to pause there for a moment and come back. Let me just say, if you're listening today, that this podcast is downloadable from Apple, iTunes, podcasts, wherever you are. You can also find it on Martin Goldsmith's web, which is uh, a WordPress, uh, martingoldsmith.com web, where he also blogs. Okay, we're back with Martin Goldsmith, and uh, this is the final part of what is really a fascinating encounter with... uh, He's a good friend of mine. We've known each other a number of years, and I dare say you were my tutor. Many years. Was that 30, 40? I don't know. Uh, (laughs) Something like that. I think I met you in 1978. Right, so That's a good few 41 years. years. And we're 2019 now. But uh, the question I want to ask, Martin, is, is what are you doing now? How are you spending your time? And I know you write and you blog. Tell us a bit about that also. Well, uh, I taught at All Nations Christian College for a lot of years, and I still teach a little bit there. Uh, but I also travel the world preaching and teaching uh, in Christian churches and conferences and so on. Uh, and I'm still available for that. That's uh, if you didn't hear it, folks. Martin can come to your own assembly wherever you are. Absolutely. Tell us about the, uh, the blog that you're doing at the moment. Yes, I feel that John's writings are the, really the heart of what we want today. Uh, John is offering, uh, through faith in Jesus... Uh, that we can have life and life abundant here on earth and also that we can have eternal life when we die. Uh, So life eternal. Uh, But he's also very strong on love and relationships and our world today is so broken in its relationships and so much loneliness and the glory of, of belonging together and loving each other. And that's just wonderful and very satisfying. So I'm doing blogs each week on the writings of John in the New Testament. And how can uh, listeners access that blog? Can you... you can access it on my website, which is Martin Goldsmith, all lower casing, martingoldsmith.wordpress.com. That's great. And you've also written a few books, I think. Yes, people might enjoy. Uh, I've written my life story and some of my overseas experience uh, in a little book called Life's Tapestry. And my latest book is one on, and it, it's called Storytelling. Story. And when I was in Asia, I was known as the storyteller. Well, thank you, Martin. I think you've probably written 20 or 30 other books uh, as well. Something like that, yes. uh, We don't really have time to look at each one right now, but uh, let me rec- recommend uh, all your books. And uh, if you'd like to read Martin's blog on John and One John, uh, you can find it on his uh, WordPress, martingoldsmith.com website. And you can find my books uh, on Amazon or its equivalents. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you for being our very first Jew in the Pew. It's my privilege. Thank you. (laughs)